You are logged on to the Computer Corner Show, now available from both our website at www.compcornr.com and on YouTube for your convenience. I'm your host, Phil Shortell, the lead instructor at Computer Corner in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And with me here today are my co-hosts, Carol and Joe Petronovich, the owners of Computer Corner. Good day to you both. Good day, everyone. Hey, if you're unsure which way is up on your IMAP, you're not wholly sure what an integer is, or you can't tell an internet from an intranet, you can listen to us and we're gonna give you information that helps you. Maybe not about those specific things, <laughs> uh, not today anyway on those, but we are gonna talk about things that should make your computing life a little bit easier. We hope so. So people listening to us on YouTube may not know who we are, so mm -hmm. we're gonna let you know a little bit more about Computer Corner. Computer Corner has been in business in New Mexico for 36 years. That's and a long time. It, it, <laughs> it, it is a long time. And of course, Joe and I have been the owners for all those years. We offer computer sales, service training, and recycling to home users, businesses, and state, local, and federal government agencies. Computer Corner is high tech with a human touch, and we say this because in this high tech world, we still believe that customer service is the number one priority. We hold numerous contracts with government agencies, which includes those with the city of Albuquerque, the county of Bernalillo, the state of New Mexico, and a little big one there, I guess, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Yeah. Phil is Computer Corner software expert, having been a technology instructor for over 30 years. And Joe has been a techie for over 36 years, is an MCSE, which is a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. So he could actually troubleshoot and fix a computer that is 40 years old. Yeah, I could. If you could find the parts. If you could find the computer that's 40 <laughs> years old and it's not being used for anything other than a boat anchor. Yeah. Oh, Carol holds many, many sales certifications and has a great deal of product knowledge, having been the primary salesperson for the state of New Mexico and Los Alamos Laboratory for more than 30 years. Now, let's get on with the show. So today we're going to talk about 10 things you probably didn't know you could do in Windows 10. There are actually more than 10, and yeah. we could act, name probably 20, but... We're going to focus on the ones that we think would be important to the broadest range of our listeners. But before we do, I want to talk about a new addition to our family. Oh, it's not a baby and it's not a puppy. It's something we've been talking about on the Computer Corner show for almost a year. That's right. I got the new Epson EcoTank printer last week, and I'm excited about that. My all-in-one HP printer scanner copier combo, which I'd had for, oh gosh, probably 10 years, I really overused it, mm. and it was on its last legs. So we opted for the new Epson Eco Printer, and I got the model ET3750. Right out of the box, it's rated to print 14,000 black-only text pages and 11,200 color pages before you have to buy new ink. Now, stop and think about that. That's, that's a lot of printing. That's really a lot of printing. Most people probably wouldn't go through that in quite a while. Well, I do a lot of printing. Yes. So... And the ink tanks are refillable, and Epson includes all the ink that you need to do this, estimating that you can save around $1,500 in ink, and what they say could be up to two years. You know, this, is, this has been a long thing coming, <laughs> a, long, a long idea coming. This should have always been the way to continue to buy tiny ink cartridges for a lot of money, day after day, week after month, year after year, is a worse philosophy than the Gillette razor blade. Well, that's that was the whole thing with yeah. Gillette. He he gave you the razor right. so right. you would buy the blades. But uh, when you think about this with the ink cartridges, especially every printer, every different model, you seem to use a different right. kind of an ink cartridge, and think they of, were expensive. Think they of were. all that e waste, also all that. It yeah, all gets all thrown in the landfill. Yep. Well, actually, take the cartridges back and recycle them. Well, sure, yeah. you and I do, mm -hmm. but not everybody does. The greater no. percentage a lot of them doesn't. go into the trash. No, but this this new idea of just having a well in there, in effect, and being able yep. to refill it at will. What was nice about this is it's not messy at all. You you take the cap off the ink. You can turn it upside down. It does not flow until you put it in its connector on the printer. And then you see the levels go up right in front of your eyes, real levels, like yeah, you're looking at a water level. Yeah, it's not electronic version of, of and, what and ink is left in your You know, you just, you just feel good about it. Yeah. Now, this is an inkjet printer rather than a laser printer, which most people don't tend to think of except for business use of laser, right? right? 
true, but both HP and Epson, which are my two favorite printer brands, they have what they term workforce or work center ink-based printers that are faster than some laser printers. But mm -hmm. the only thing I can see wrong with this printer at all so far is that they rate the usage at about 300 pages a month. And I probably print more like a thousand pages a month. Yeah, but that's you, I think, Carol. I yeah, think that, I, I agree. think that the yeah, the average. I don't think I do three hundred more than three hundred pages a yeah, month. Yeah, you're and probably I, right. And I do print, and I print a lot of photographs. But uh, that's you know, I think they story. had to put that stipulation in there for their their warranty of two years. Oh, sure. Um, there had to be some variable in there, otherwise somebody who's wanting to print out a, their thesis ten times mm -hmm. would go buy one of these printers and and delete all the ink in a week and then take it back. Hey, someday we'll talk to you about the difference between inkjet and laser printers on, in more depth than the way they do the processing of the data. In fact, we might do that on our next show because we're going to be talking about how your printer can be hacked. Yes, yeah. your printer. But for now, we're going to talk about the things that Windows can do, especially Windows 10, that you probably didn't know about. All righty. So number one, you can rotate the image on your screen in Windows 10 just by right clicking on it. Now, that's not new. I know it actually goes back to XP, but most people don't know about I, it. I, I didn't know that. They don't. And and what, first thing I think we have to clarify is when we're talking about an image, we're talking about a photograph. That we're not talking about simply right clicking on the screen and suddenly turning it clockwise or counterclockwise. Sure. You can do that, by the way, depending upon the monitor you've got, but that's not <laughs> what we're talking about. We're talking about looking at a photographic image that you've got in a file, uh, in a folder on your computer look at it right click on it turn it alrighty so number two what's a, another favorite of yours this, Phil? Uh, this one is specific to Windows 10 you can now choose to print as a PDF file ah, now, yes. didn't they just make that change um, well actually they had it built into Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel a little bit earlier um, and we, we can go back through the history of this Adobe and Microsoft have never really gotten along oh we know no. that okay they they, they seem to um, not cat, be the best of friends. Cat and mouse. And in fact, at one particular point before Microsoft Word was able to print to PDF, Microsoft introduced its own portable type of system called XPS. Ah. And I'm not sure that anybody but me ever tried to use it. But it was the same concept where you could get a free reader for XPS files so that somebody could print an Excel spreadsheet as an XPS and send it to somebody who didn't have Excel and they would be able to look at it. Got it. But they never really made grounds against the PDF format being the dominant one in the industry. And now Microsoft has finally um, thrown up the white flag on that, I guess. And now from just about anywhere in Microsoft, you can print to a PDF. Form. And I like this one a lot because when you choose the print option, which by the way, can be done by hitting the control key and P mm -hmm. rather than using your mouse, you can actually choose to print to your printer or you can choose the option called Microsoft Print to PDF. Right, and that will of course save the file on your computer as a PDF file, which you can in turn go off <coughs> and send to anyone. As long as they have the, the Adobe Reader, they would be able to look at it and possibly print it unless of course you have tried to put some of the security back on that, but that's a whole other story yes. too. The third thing that we like about Windows 10 is Microsoft Edge. And mm -hmm. of course, that's the new web browser for Windows 10, but it's now available for everyone, even Apple users. The best thing about that is it lets you strip away ads on most web articles. I think that is really one of the most wonderful things they've ever done. There is an icon up in the right part of the address bar. You know the address bar. That's the white bar at the top of the screen. It looks like a book. When you click on that, you go into reading view and what it does, all those ads on the side of the article you're trying to read, all that stuff about trying to sell you cooking equipment on the recipe site you're looking mm -hmm. at. Right. And I say that because I go to recipe sites a lot. All of that stuff just goes away and you get the article and the main photographs that are in the article. It's worth using Edge just for, the, you know, just for that one feature alone. It is called reading view. And I love it. I like it too. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so number four, Phil. Okay, you, the File Explorer, previously called the Windows Explorer. It's now called the File Explorer in Windows 10. I use that 10 times a day. I, I, I might even be under, under uh, stating what I use that for. I'm always in there 
moving stuff around and finding files. And most people think that they have to go down to the icon on the taskbar or an icon on the desktop, the one that now says this PC, which used to say my computer. I changed mine to say my computer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and you can do that kind of stuff in you, Windows 10 if you, you want to. You can do that too, but you don't need to use the mouse to go to get it. All you need is to hold down the Windows key. Now, the Windows key on a desktop computer is always the second key from the left in the row nearest to you. Where it is on a laptop computer, unfortunately, I cannot be so firm about where that is because right. different manufacturers put them in different places and sometimes the same manufacturer will have it in different places on different models. But if you hold down that Windows key and while you're holding it down, hit the letter E on your keyboard, the file explorer pops up into view. So why is that so helpful, Phil? Because I'm in it 10 times a day <laughs> <laughs> uh, for one reason. And because again, I'm using the file explorer to find things. I'm always looking for some file, whether it's a computer corner file, uh, one of the student files I wanna go over and see you know, what's in it for doing a class or whether it's looking for a photograph of my own or whether it is looking for a, a document. So it's a time saver, a convenience, mm -hmm. all those things. I figure that now I've known that this is not new in Windows 10 that this happened, by the way. This is something that's been in Windows at least since Windows 95. When really? That started, long? Yeah, at least huh. when the key started to appear on the keyboards. And I figure that over the course of the time since then, that's, that's a long time, I've probably saved weeks of time by not reaching for the mouse just to go to the Windows Explorer. By the way, there are a whole bunch of other things that the Windows key can do. And if you come into one of our classes here, we can go through that. We don't really have the time to, to do it all today in the podcast, but there are many things that key does and nobody seems to know it's there. Hmm. I'm curious now about all the other ones that you can use this for too. So, mm -hmm. all right, the number five, thing that you may not know about Windows 10. If you don't know what version of Windows 10 you're running. Well, you can find you, out. You sure can. You can do that very easily. And as a matter of fact, here's another one thing you have, now that I think about it that you could use the Windows key for. Hold down the Windows key and type the letter R as in run. That brings up a little window where you could then type in the command Winver, W-I-N-V-E-R, and then run it. So maybe you're checking to see if your updates or your patches are current. This if would you want to see exactly what it. version you're on, if do you have update 1809 or whatever the latest one happens to be, it'll give you the information that you need before you take further steps to go on to something else. Hey, next one, number six is a Windows 10 feature. If you want to copy what's on your screen, even from a full motion video, Okay, or, or if it's going, I don't mean you're going to copy the full motion video. You'll get I a mean, screenshot. You're going to get a screenshot yeah. of whatever frame that video is playing. You can do that. Hold down the control key. The control key is the bottom most leftmost key on your keyboard. And hit the print screen button, usually located at the top right of your keyboard. It might be in a different place on a laptop. And then open the document that you want to paste the image into. Hold down the control key again and type the letter V now, as in see, Victor. The, the beauty of these podcasts is people can stop it, back it up a minute, mm -hmm. and write down what you just said. They could. They can, but why the letter V? It, it, it's really interesting. I, I puzzled about that while, you know, well, first of all, they, you can't do P for paste because P already means print. print. But if you were an old person, well, not an old person, but if you were around doing editing of documents, when your oh. editor gave you back something and they wanted you to insert something sure. in a particular place, they would put a blue letter V in the place where they wanted you to insert. I thought that, I always thought that was just an, a, like an arrow, the bottom of an arrow, not a V. Well, it, you, you can, you can <laughs> look at insert. it as the bottom. Of, yeah, you could do that. But it, to me, it's, it's the letter V on the keyboard. Yes, it is. Which is why I am saying that. And okay. it's probably because it's the old editor's insertion mark. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the seventh Windows 10 secret is also the secret start menu. What's the secret about it? <laughs> <laughs> if you right click on the start menu, on the start button, pardon me, you will get a different start menu. Why would you want to do this? Because there are a lot of commands that are up there that don't exist on the start menu. The way to get to control panel, the way to get to system information and all kinds of other things. Give it a try and read what you get. 
you know, it'd kind of be boring if I just read you the 12 or 13 different things that list on that start menu. That so way. say that again. You just right click on start. Right click on start and you will get an alternate uh, alternative start menu with a whole bunch of programs listed there that you can invoke directly from the start menu without having to go and find the program or search for it or go down to the desktop. To nice. Get it. Very nice. Okay. I think you're up. I think number eight is yours. Oh, it's me. It's my turn. <laughs> New feature in Windows 10. You can make audio notes for yourself through Voice Recorder. Well, the Voice Recorder has been around for a while, but they do make it a little bit easier here. What would you do for that? I mean, the voice menu. Oh, like record. If you're a doctor, perhaps mm -hmm. make you're going on rounds and you're recording things. Yeah. And or... in fact, I've seen doctors do that. And uh, I've seen doctors want to do that in conjunction with Microsoft OneNote, which I know oh, of is course. not a new thing either, although in Windows 10, it's part of Windows instead of part of Office. And the doctor who wanted to do the OneNote class would make recorded notes after visiting a patient, but they also could use OneNote to include in that file for the patient x-rays, prescription information, notations of any kind from other people who've gone by nurses notations etc so that could be you could be doing anything you could be on your laptop in a meeting you could be in your office and just want to record a voice message for yourself mm -hmm. you could be looking for property to move into and, and recording things so there's all kinds of different things you so could what be using i would your do would be go form. down to the search box down on the taskbar just to the right of the uh, start button itself and type in their voice and that will bring up a link to the voice recorder perfect so number nine new feature in windows 10 is really great it's the malicious software removal tool the or a mrt the mrt no, okay. as opposed to the art if uh, any oh let's not go there are in albuquerque you don't want to hear about that anymore but what is it for it is literally what it says. It is designed to remove malicious software that's been left on the computer. We recommend to people that they use tools like Malwarebytes and Hitman Pro. But if you don't want to purchase those, or there is a free version of one of those, and both are available for free trials. But if you don't want to purchase one of those, you can use the MRT to remove remnants of malicious software and it's free it's right it's built into there i don't think it's updated as often as it's not and pro malware bytes but it would work for you if you did not have hitman pro or malware bytes okay number 10 cortana your personal windows assistant well what does that mean a personal windows assistant Every, <laughs> you know, most people have smartphones these days don't they yeah so and they know those about of you that who kind have of thing. iphones which in our last uh, in our last podcast, we told you don't try and drill a, a hole for the uh, headphone jack. Um, that's a whole other story, though. But if you have an iPhone, you have Siri. If you have an Android phone, you have Bixby. And if you have a Windows computer, you have Cortana. It is just something in there that you can either type information into, type questions into, I should say, or you can speak to Cortana and say, Cortana, open Microsoft Word. Or you could say, Cortana, what is playing at the theater near me? You know, what are the show times near me? So it's just like Alexa on some of the, it's, the it's smart it's devices. It's very similar too. to Alexa, you know, the all those particular things. And I guess uh, since it is similar to Alexa and Google and all those other things, watch what you say to it. Absolutely. Well, As if you've heard it can turn itself on with a, thinking it's getting a voice command to do that. And it can record your conversations I, I read the other day now where you can ask to delete my previous day's conversations hmm. because everything you say in the house is being recorded mm -hmm. scary thought yeah I have to worry about my dogs and cat listening in on what I say <laughs> they don't talk about it anyway they're pretty well sworn to secrecy. <laughs> but uh, it's it's a handy thing everybody's getting used to these personal assistants mm -hmm. uh, the world is going that way they exist now in your television or in your cable box and where you sometimes can, in your refrigerator and sometimes in your refrigerator and it says hey I, I need another Scott on the rocks right and it keeps track of how many you're drinking <laughs> It uh, could be. Watch could be. out for this, folks. Yep. Okay, moving along now. All right, so that was number 10, but we have a bonus. Bonus, bonus. We can't leave this one out. You can personalize your desktop, 
including the folders that you want to appear on the start menu. Now that's something f to do that in Windows 10, you go into settings and personalize and on the left side of the setting screen, you'll see start. And on there you can say, I always want to have a link to my pictures folder. I always want to have a link to my downloads. I always want to have a link to the main folders that are there in Windows just making it easier for you to get them than it's ever been before. You know, we do the same thing with brand new computers here at Computer Corner when people purchase them. We've gone in to that menu and selected themes and chose My PC and Control Panel to put on the desktop in addition to the Recycle mm -hmm. that comes default. So you'll get those three icons on every desktop. Yeah, so these are just a bunch of little things that you can do that we think probably most of you didn't already know that you could do with Windows 10. Right. Well, I got to tell you, if you're used to seeing control panel on your desktop and you <laughs> buy a Windows 10 machine, you are going to have one heck of a time getting into control panel. If not you, if you buy it at computer not corner. If you buy right. it That's at why computer we put corner. those but icons on the desktop. If you're out there and you don't know how to get into control panel, I'll tell you two different ways. Number one, go to start, scroll way down to Windows system and inside Windows system is control panel. Yeah. Or if you'd like to do it a little more efficiently, go to that search box I talked about, click there and type the word control and you'll also find control panel. But you'll have to do that every time. But you'll have to do that. I like time. it on the desktops. Right. Two clicks Our away. You're in. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So you can also get to that from a right click on the start menu too, though. Okay. I think we've reached the end of our show for this week. We hope you'll join us again in two weeks when we'll be talking about how people can hack into your printer to get your personal data. That's right. Your printer. Printers can be hacked into too. What's next? Mm. If you want to be updated when a new show is posted, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter by going to our website, which is www.compcorner.com. Don't forget that at Computer Corner, we do free electronic recycling and also offer a free computer diagnostic exam in our service department for all veterans. And we hope that you'll think of Computer Corner for all your hardware, software, service, and training needs. If you're in the area, you would love to have you come visit us. We're located at? 3101 Manal, Northeast. And you know, we've been here now for just about two, two years. years. And, and it's, it's a beautiful facility. We have very, very experienced and knowledgeable people here to, who can uh, help you find the computer that's going to be right for you. Absolutely. But anyone... Uh, until we meet again, please mind your bits and bytes. This is Phil. And Carol. And Joe. Wishing you carefree computing. The Computer Corner Show is logging off. Mm -hmm.